WFTV Nine Family Connection celebrates African-American trailblazers in our community. It is important, I think, to African-American children, black children, to see their aspirations are attainable. And if you don't ever see people who serve in the roles that you aspire to achieve, then perhaps you kind of have this uh, doubt about whether or not all right, so estamos aquí ya en vivo la noche de hoy en Marky Marcano Show. The Marky Marcano Show en vivo. Nada más y nada menos que por acá, pues ya ustedes saben, por uh, Facebook.com, debido a que desafortunadamente volvemos a tirar la señal y Beatriz, por algún tipo de razón, empieza la cuestión a dañarse. So ya vamos a entre, 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 vamos directamente a la entrevista en la noche de hoy. So we are back en vivo en directo. And we're ready for this interview tonight with Mayor, uh, Orange County Mayor uh, Jerry Demons, uh, American politician and former law enforcement officer serving as mayor of the Orange County, Florida, in office since year 2018. A Democrat, he's previously served as the sheriff of the Orange County, Florida from 2009 through December of 2018 and served in chief of the Orlando Police Department and director of public safety for the Orange County, Florida. And he was elected mayor of the Orange County back in August 2018. In the you know what? And this is amazing because not only he became the first Democrat and first African American American to be elected at the office, but he also is being reelected too. And I'm so proud and happy to have him tonight with a big applause, Jerry Demons. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Let me fix your camera here real quick. Don't you don't have to do anything, Major? Good evening. How are you today? Uh, I am doing fantastic, and I hope you are doing as well. All right, on the same line, maybe you know her. She's with us in the past. Beatriz Andercovich. Beatriz, Jerry Demings. Hi, Major Deming. So nice. Thank you for being with us tonight. I'm glad and to be here. You know me. I'm, I'm I'm anybody asks me to speak uh, uh, appear on programs, uh, I humbly say, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> But the good thing about the Marky Marcano show is because the show also is actually bilingual. We actually have a lot of interview in the Spanish, but at the same time, we always honor to have someone that actually speak English to us so we can actually work out a little bit. But tonight, my friend, oh, my God, Major, I'm so excited. There's so much going on tonight. But my home is it, it, something we always say in Spanish in Puerto Rico. My home is getting shorter. It's so small with your visit here tonight. And that is so great. So for everybody who are watching us tonight live in all platforms, Facebook Live and everywhere, 68 beautiful souls are already joining us tonight. Can you please tell us a little bit more about who is Jerry Deming? Because they're watching you right now in India. They're watching in Tunisia, Europeans, Caribbean, South America, and Central and North America. They're watching us tonight. So... For this beautiful, now it's 132, so it keep growing, the numbers. So uh, so for everybody who are watching us tonight, just tell us a little bit of Jerry Timmons to the world. Well, buenas noches. Uh, yo soy buenas noches. El, el padre de, de Condado de Orange, Jerry Demings. Uh, I am serving uh, presently as the fifth elected mayor of Orange County, and what a privilege it is to serve in this elected role. It's a nonpartisan role. And as the mayor of the county, I am the chief executive officer for the county and responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of our county, all nearly 8,000 employees and the $7.2 billion budget that we help to manage. In addition, I serve as the chair of the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, there are six members of the Board of County Commission and myself. I'm the only one that is elected countywide. The other county commissioners are elected from within a district, and we all are subject to term limits. We cannot serve for more than two consecutive four-year terms. So I do chair the Board of County Commissioners, the legislative uh, branch of our local government. Oh, wow. That's actually amazing to hear. So at the same line, I know Beatrice is going to have some questions too, but I have a, another question for you. Uh, regarding all these amazing um, duties that you have. Tell us about those young steps. Let's go back in time a little bit. And how was the interest to join the law enforcement, then later become a mayor of our county, who is Orange County? 
Well, I'm incredibly blessed because I've had a Amen. wonderful 42-year <laughs> uh, career as a public servant here within this community, starting out as a street cop with the Orlando Police Department, and I worked my way up through all of the ranks. And in 1998, 25 years ago approximately, I was appointed as the 34th Chief of Police in the history of Orlando and the first African-American to serve in that role. Uh, I uh, served for four years and uh, retired from the agency after uh, over 20 years of service in uh, 2002. And uh, I came to work here at Orange County government at that time as deputy county administrator and director of public safety. And I served in that role for nearly six years. And then I had the privilege of being elected as a 28th uh, sheriff in Orange County's history. I was elected in uh, 2008, and I served as sheriff until I retired from the agency in 2018. And on December the 4th, 2018, for the first 12 hours of the day, I was Orange County Sheriff, and for the second 12 hours of the day, I was Orange County Mayor. And so wow. I don't know if the same <laughs> person will ever have served in both roles. And then I'm married. Of course, my wife, uh, I'm better known these days, as the husband of the Honorable <laughs> former Congresswoman Val Butler Demings. Uh, she too served as Orlando Chief of Police. She was the 36th Orlando Chief of Police and so far wow. the first only woman to have served in that role. So when I was sheriff, uh, she was the Chief of Police in Orlando. And of course, she went on to serve in uh, the United States House of Representatives. Uh, she served in three terms and she is now uh, working as an advocate across the nation and out on the speaking circuit. That's amazing. And uh, I remember the years I've been living in Central Florida. Remember um, uh, Mayor when there was part of the OPD back then, and then later on um, um, Orange County, and then your wife OPD, and then all of a sudden now we're all mayors and so happy. I mean, and just to see this, how our city are, are, are growing with our leaders and we able to see it through the years, and that is amazing. At the same time, I know uh, Beatriz has some questions. So Beatriz, go ahead, please. Question for our mayor tonight. Yes, dear mayor. We were talking that we have all these people from all these countries watching us. What I want everybody to know is that we have this world home. We have people from so many diverse communities here in Central Florida in Orange County. My question would be, how hard or easy, how interesting is to contribute, to serve this diverse community that you have from so many countries in your own county? Well, uh, that's a joy, actually, as we celebrate the broad diversity that we have in our community. I believe that the strength of our community rests in the fact that we have this wonderful community, a kaleidoscope of different colors and ethnic heritages from around the world. Uh, as of last month, the U.S. Census uh, has estimated our population at 1,515,000 wow. people, which makes Orange County the fifth most populated county within the state of Florida, but a county by population size larger than several states. We have more people in our county than live in the state of Delaware, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, and a number of other places around the country. So it is a truly a large county. Uh, it's an urban county uh, with diasporas from all over the world. Uh, primarily, uh, we see the largest uh, diasporas uh, who are of Hispanic background, uh, a little over 30% of our population identify as having uh, Spanish heritage uh, and then we have a number of uh, individuals who are in our community who are of African descent. Uh, we have many uh, who uh, come from the different uh, Caribbean islands. Uh, we have many who are from Brazil, from South America. Uh, we have many who are from Asia, uh, including Japan, China, Korea, uh, and uh, even uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands and, and other places uh, from Europe. Uh, wow. We have a number of people here who are of Italian descent, German descent, uh, who are uh, from uh, England, uh, who uh, are from 
various places around the world. And so we get to experience those cultures because of the dance, the performing arts, uh, the food, and all that we have to offer as the number one tourist destination in North America. Yes, we do, Major. And we also have, because they're watching us, many people from India and from African countries and Arab African countries. Hello to everybody who you also serve. Do you think, dear Major, that it's because you yourself are a, major, a minority who took advantage of the opportunities that this country has to offer to everybody? because they are for everybody, and you yourself took advantage of those opportunities. Do you think that has made a difference to the legacy, to the example that you give all of us? Could you talk about that? Because I think that when we see you and your wife, that you can make it, we can all make it. There's an opportunity for everybody. Can you expand on that, please? Absolutely. The more we spend time with uh, people who are perhaps uh, from a different heritage than our own, it gives us the opportunity to learn about them and their culture. I've, I live in a neighborhood that is predominantly uh, made up of people from India and Pakistan. Uh, and uh, because of that, I have had the opportunity to learn much about their culture. In terms of my rise to the point where I am today, uh, it has been nothing short of extraordinary. Uh, many of the uh, opportunities that I've had were made possible because of someone who gave me a chance. And in most cases, it was someone who did not look like me. Uh, the person who appointed me as uh, the first uh, African-American police chief was so far the first and only woman to have been mayor of the city of Orlando. And that was Mayor Glenda E. Hood, uh, Richard Crotty appointed me as a deputy county administrator and director of public safety. And uh, then, of course, I ran for sheriff and then uh, then mayor. Along that journey, uh, people who are uh, from the faith community uh, to those who live in our community have uh, been part of uh, my uh, development. And so I am one who always looks uh, for collaboration with others. And I say that it is important our community that we can make our community the best community that it can possibly be through uh, innovation, uh, collaboration, and inclusion. Uh, we endeavor to include people in the broad-based prosperity that we enjoy as a community. And so when we treat people with dignity and respect and we treat them like we want to be treated and we work to mentor and develop people, it creates a uh, synergy, it creates uh, opportunity, it creates a better understanding for one. Uh, in the words of Mahatma Gandhi, he said that no culture can live if it seeks to be exclusive. But respect uh, for one's differences is a healthy sign of progress. And so we are making progress, even though sometimes we are divided along political lines. Uh, I believe that the strength of our community comes when we all come together and we put aside political ideologies or differences and make decisions that are truly in the best interest of all people. And so that's why I'm here on the show tonight uh, to say that uh, that is a community that we live in and I'm happy to be a part of it. So, hey, all right. You know, Beatrice, thank, thank you. you because... Mayor, thank you for your support of women for being always in every celebration of every culture. Thank you. And I give you back to Marty. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Beatriz. You. Amazing We're questions disgusting. and great answers tonight. So, Mayor, you just mentioned something that gave me a flashback like 10 years ago. So, you're saying something about that you're part of events, including religious events. And I, that is actually what I actually see you for first time. Um, I think it was back um, in uh, Dr. Phillips. Uh, it was the uh, Hanukkah concert or for Chabad. And uh, they were light up the uh, Hanukkah, right? And I was there. And that was because I'm Jewish. And I was there. And I remember you were there too. And all of a sudden, we just like taking pictures and saying hi. And 
mayor, you, I mean, you were pretty much uh, friendly with us. And I'm like, hey, can we take a picture? Is that okay? He's like, of course. So we took a photo. And as soon as I got that picture, I will share with you in, in, uh, uh, sometime soon. But I do have that picture somewhere hiding. And I'm going to go and find out and, 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 and share with you because I think it was a great opportunity to have our mayor uh, working together with everybody. And that's amazing. Once again, I shout out all the people, 255 watching our live show tonight. Thank you so much. Let's continue sharing this with the world. Uh, Mayor, I have a question. Um, what was the motivation they actually gave you to continue pursuing your your dream? Because this is more than dream. This is something to work with the community and be part of it. But what it give you motivation every day to continue doing this every single day? What is what is the motivation of Jerry Depp? Yes. Well, I have a number of motivations, but most of it centers around my family. This Very is good. a community where I was born and raised uh, to two blue collar workers. My parents never had a whole lot. Uh, they worked hard. They were able to save some dollars and help send their children away to school, to college. And I'm fortunate that I have uh, a good education uh, and I have been able to pay it forward because of those who sowed a seed into my life and so I'm highly motivated every day uh, when I get up to make this community a better place, not just for my family, but for your family. This is where my children, I have three adult sons and they're all married with wives and I have five grandchildren. And so when I go to work every day, I come to work to make this a better community for my family. And that gives me a uh, great perspective. I'm, it makes me highly motivated because as a public servant, uh, as a first responder, law enforcement officer, I had the opportunity to work with others to save people's lives, to make a difference in the lives of just average people uh, by sometimes getting them off the streets, out of their uh, situations of homelessness, uh, those who have been mentally ill, getting them into treatment. And now as mayor, I get to work in that space by planning, being a visionary. My style of leadership is one to be a visionary leader. To me, a visionary is someone who, who anticipates the need for something before it's needed and they take action in a timely manner. In this bully pulpit of being the Orange County mayor, I am able to work across all disciplines, all, all across the public sector, but work with the private sector to uh, make meaningful decisions about the future uh, of our um, family members, our, our children and their children, and for generations not yet born uh, by making decisions about how we invest and how we protect God's green earth uh, through sustainability and resiliency decisions that I get to make, how we uh, conserve water, how we take care of the animals and the humans uh, here on Correct. planet earth. Uh, it is just a fantastic place to be, to have influence, not power, but to have influence on the trajectory of our community. That's amazing. That is amazing, Beatrice. So we're getting closer to the end of this amazing interview tonight. And, oh, Lord, I cannot even go away without sharing this beautiful picture right here. This is last year. Uh, this is actually was on Juneteenth celebration right there on the building office in downtown Orlando. And I remember I told I say, hey, Jerry, you know, I seen you before and I'm always very happy to see you. But I want at least one opportunity to be part of the Marky Mark Counter show. And today, April 17th, year 2023, you're here with us tonight. And I'm so, so happy about it and, and humble. This is amazing. So the question is, what is next for Jerry Demons in future plans? By the way, you mentioned April 17th. Uh, I have to give a shout out to my second granddaughter. Anai uh, turned 15 today. And so, Congrats. Anai, if you were watching, happy birthday, baby. <laughs> but, okay, what, what motivates me, I guess, <laughs> to, to, to stay in the fight? Uh, it, it, what motivates me is the fact that the fight is not over. Uh, we are still working to improve uh, the living conditions for our residents and for our families. And uh, I just get uh, this incredible opportunity to represent uh, all 1.5 million people as we endeavor to do that every single day. Wow, that's incredible. Beatrice, one more thing before we, we're, we're wrapping up for tonight. <laughs> yes, 
I want to thank the mayor because he has given women and there are many women here from different countries a representation in the government. You are surrounded by many strong women, including your wife, from so many countries that bring the world into Orange County. And you're so wonderful with opportunities for all of us. So I want to thank you, especially since we're Latin, me, I'm Mexican, for the representation that we have, because we have Ilia Torres, for example, who's Latin and a woman. So thank you for having so many women serving in Orange County. That's what I meant, thank you. The opportunities are there. And we all have to know that with a major like you, we can all grow as a community because we make the community. That's correct. Ilia Torres and Maribel Cordero is also part of the whole thing. I say, que, thank you so much. And my Olive. So I get to work with uh, a board of county commission, a very, very diverse board uh, of the six county commissioners. Uh, we have five of them who are women. Uh, out of the five women, three are Latinas. Uh, Commissioner Emily Bonilla, Commissioner Myra Rube, and Commissioner Maribel Gomez Cordero. Uh, in addition, we have Commissioner Christine Moore and then Commissioner Michael Scott. He's brand new. He's been on the commission since November of this year. And so we have uh, a great team. Uh, but in this role, I've had opportunity to uh, appoint and promote a number of uh, women. My chief of staff is a woman, Mary, uh, Roseanne Harrington. Uh, my deputy chief of staff is a woman, Carol Burkett. You mentioned Ilya Torres. Uh, she is one of my special assistants. Ronald wow. Robinson, one of my special assistants. Elizabeth Roby, one of my special assistants. Shally Wong, uh, one of my special assistants. And, uh, and then I have Mark Espeso, uh, who uh, is one of my special assistants. He represents the LGBTQ plus community. So we are all inclusive with our, our, our staff here. I've had the privilege of appointing uh, some of the very first women to lead departments here within the county. Uh, I had the opportunity to appoint uh, Dr. Uh, Martinez, uh, Yolanda Martinez, who uh, was the first uh, female to head up our health services department. Uh, she is no longer with us. She, uh, Dr. Raul Pino uh, has come in and taken over that role. Uh, but we uh, had the opportunity to uh, promote uh, the first uh, African-American female to uh, deputy county administrator. Uh, Ms. Carla Bell Johnson uh, is serving in that role. And so we do want women and all people to have the opportunity to serve in these various leadership roles. That's amazing. And we thank you for so that. So we thank you for that. I mean, that is just amazing, amazing team to work for. So right now we're uh, at the end of this one for me. I, I, you know what, Beatrice? I don't know you, but I really want to have a, like a, what they call a rematch for this interview because this was amazing. We could just keep going and going and going because we do have a lot of questions for but we understand also Jerry times as well. But I appreciate to be here with us right here tonight at the Marky Marcano Show here in Orlando, Florida. For me, this is this is amazing. Then our mayor can actually share a little bit with us tonight, and that is amazing. And doors are always open, uh, mayor. Anytime. Hope we see you in a sometime events. Just for last, what is the social media? Any social media when everybody can actually, from all the part of the world, they want to see more of Jerry Demings, where they can follow you on social media? Well, they can follow us on uh, various social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, and we, if you just Google Jerry Demings, uh, it'll all pop up out there. We're fortunate we have uh, Orange County TV or Orange TV. Orange and, TV. Uh, have a great communications team led by Dr. Jeff Williamson. And our team is very, very active uh, many times each day. They're pushing information out. Uh, so our website is ocfl.net. And there's a lot of uh, connectivity through the website itself. So uh, thank you so much for having me tonight. Uh, I can conclude my remarks by saying muchas gracias. Uh, yes. <laughs> thank you, Jerry, thank and you I hope I'll, I'll see you soon in, in, a, in, a, in a nearby event. 
That was Jerry Debbie, mayor of the Orange County, right here on the Marky Marcano Show. We're going to take a segment break, and we'll be back with more right here on the Marky Marcano Show. Dolly, play Iesto. <laughs> WFTV Nine Family Connection celebrates African American trailblazers in our community. It is important, I think, to African American children, black children, to see their aspirations are attainable. And if you don't ever see people who serve in the roles that you aspire to achieve, then perhaps you kind of have this uh, doubt.